Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest in the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Philip Ailes on the line, and he is founder over at Ailes Solutions. Philip, welcome to the show. Thank you. All right, so I'm excited to get into today's topic. So first off, you will be one of our upcoming authors in our latest business leaders book release. So I'm really excited and thrilled to have you to have you be part of the project. And of course, I want to go into what you're doing over at Ale Solution uh, Solutions, really how you got started there, and really what led you down this path. But before we do, we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So Philip, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for our entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Philip, what mission matters to you? The mission that matters to me is the ability to assist veterans mm -hmm. in finding happiness. And part of that is I use emotional intelligence and mindfulness as a foundation to build a better future. Hmm. and getting, and it's not what I want or what I think you should want. No, it's tailored to the individual to break, uh, to get them to understand what they really want out of life. Hmm. Uh, a lot of them, uh, once you, I've already did a career already and I'm retired from it. And a friend of mine, because I got disillusioned there for a while, uh, a friend of mine named Robert McKim, is a buddy that I went to Iraq with mm -hmm. and I stayed in touch with him and everything. He told me not to give up. Mm -hmm. He says, you have so much to give out in this world. And there's a message that I can bring to other veterans to let them know that what now mm -hmm. after you served your military time and you've gone out, you've done, phenomenal things, mm -hmm. live life on in chaos. Mm -hmm. But what do you do when all that's done? The lights go out and you're no longer in that high speed job anymore. Mm -hmm. And what I found out is real life is boring and it can get you down because the only thing you are is you're like, I can't believe I did all this stuff and no one will even pay attention to me. Hmm. Well, when it comes to find out, it's, I went through that journey myself. And honestly, it wasn't until I understood in emotional intelligence and mindfulness mm -hmm. that I saw everything was my, was my problem. Hmm. I brought the, I brought situations in because my ego and my pride. Yeah. And in the military, ego and pride hinders you hmm. because we're in learning to be humble and understanding and gracious to others. I didn't know, I knew that in other countries, but I didn't know it in my own. Hmm. So it took me two years of traveling all, all over the country to figure out that, wait a minute, we're all the same. <laughs> and if I can do this stuff overseas, why yeah. can't I do it in my own country and yeah. bring people together? I think your story is really interesting. And I want to, I want to go back to maybe some of the earlier days, like where did this, I know you did some work with the, with the wounded warrior project and like, and I mean, where did this want to focus on others and to begin wanting to help others? Like where did all of that begin outside of, outside of the military, of course, when you were, you know, back in civilian life? Well, in the civilian life, I've done stuff, emergency management. I was just Washington State Emergency Operations Officer mm -hmm. after I came back from Iraq. And then I got a contract to go back to Iraq. And all the connections, everything that I had been building during that time, people moved on. Because mm -hmm. I went from I went for three years overseas. And everybody, every, life changes when you do that. Yeah. And a lot of the ones that I interact with were on doing other things and I just felt lost. Mm -hmm. And I sat down, I was drinking too much mm -hmm. 
in in other words, I overindulged <laughs> when and had to come to back to uh, moderation. Mm -hmm. And I realize now <clears throat> I'm a little disappointed in myself where I was back then mm -hmm. because I had so much passion, but I had no understanding of how it affected me emotionally and how I think took things personal that I should have never had. Mm -hmm. And realizing that I went mindlessly through my career and created a huge wake behind me. Mm -hmm. And part of that of, I needed to fix me before I could help anybody else. Mm -hmm. I needed to get my finances in order. I need to get my, my family in order. I needed to get all these steps to create that better foundation mm -hmm. to where if I would have known this 30 years ago, my life would have been completely different. Mm -hmm. And knowing that you don't, what do you do when everybody thinks they're right? And yeah. coming to that and realizing that, you know what, and with Wounded Warrior Project, Operation in Uniform, that's based out of here, <laughs> I realized the more I learned, the more I didn't know or more I needed to learn. Mm. And with organizations like that, they got me off the couch and out the door. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the hardest things for the veterans that I interacted with was getting off the couch and mm. being present or showing up. Yeah. Cause with wounded warrior, I mean, I, you can't ask for anything better than someone to play. I played golf in areas that I would never have. Yeah. And I see it as they forged opportunities for veterans to get out and realize that it's, you're not the only one. Mm -hmm. everybody's going through that and now how can I possibly impact those that I meet mm. and we get we we act a little different around each other than we do in public and one of the things that saved me was my current wife mm. she made me listen and she, because my daughters were telling me, hey, dad, you might want to try something different. But I was thinking I knew everything. So I stopped. And when I was traveling across country, I stopped in Mayport, Florida, at the Naval Station there. Had no clue what I was doing. But yet I knew there, there was good things for me here. And I married a local Jacksonian, and it's still the deep South. Mm -hmm. And fortunately enough that I've been in other countries to where I don't go in prejudgment and say, oh, you guys are all screwed up. No, actually they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. It's the culture that it takes time that mm -hmm. build trust and understanding and realize that I'm not, I'm part of it. Yeah. I'm not the whole thing. And there's so many phenomenal people I've met traveling. Mm -hmm. Good people. And mm -hmm. to get people to understand or veterans to understand, you know what? We do have it we have control. Yeah. And once you once you control yourself, it, it's like the residuals off of that that everybody gets to see, feel that positive energy mm -hmm. because, you know, we've all know what negative is and it, it's not great and focusing on it will never push you forward. Mm. It'll hold you there. And, but going to Iraq with the 324th and meeting these guys that we were a small unit mm. and seeing the impact that we had and they loved us. Mm -hmm. Because we treat them with kindness and respect. Mm -hmm. And that's all they wanted. Because most of them, I mean, 50% unemployment. Mm -hmm. And all they wanted is a job that they can go home safely to their spouse or their loved ones. Yeah. And they thought it, we could get them to that point in two years. Well, we spent eight years and did none of that. Mm -hmm. But 
there, I mean, they lost 879 Iraqi police officers the year that we went there in 04. Mm. And they were just slaughtering them. Mm -hmm. And, but you had, I projected myself into their situation. Mm. What would you do if somebody did that over here in the United States? Yeah. One day of activity there would shut our whole country down. Mm hmm but over there, I, you know, it's sad when I became more accustomed to being in a combat zone because I knew what I was doing. I was trained to do it. I made all the connections, networking to get anything that we needed. Yeah. But coming back here, it, it just feels like you, you feel like one hand clapping. Mm -hmm. Or I do. I did. But yeah. now with this new purpose and everything, mm -hmm. I know my story can help others. Yeah. And Philip, so one of the things about your story, and even as we talk now, that I find just really unique and maybe, and I, I'm not trying to feed into any particular stereotype, mm -hmm. but when you talk about things like, especially about our servicemen, but when you talk about, you know, going to Iraq and being used to this, you know, a war, a war, a war zone in a battlefield situation, you mention now when you talk about kind of what you do and other things, a lot, a lot about emotions, emotional mm -hmm. intelligence, things like that that I wouldn't always attribute to those other situations. Like, is this kind of not, and you're also helping other veterans. So are these skills like new or is this something that you've always said? Is this something that you've kind of picked up afterwards to help people with? Like it, to me, it sounds like I don't hear that very often from many, from many other individuals talking about emotions, emotional intelligence, all of that. How's that taken by the, by the individuals you're helping? Actually it's welcomed. Yeah, because I, I mean, when what sparked me into it, because I've been on LinkedIn and I have 22,000 followers. Yeah. And I looked at it as okay, I look at potential hmm. and seeing because it, you might not be able to help now, but the, it is in the future. You never know who you trip into yeah. and what message you want to bring. Mine is control yourself. Learn mm -hmm. how to control yourself and you could be the master of your universe. Yeah. Because my thing was, I didn't have any control. I, everything was a battle mm -hmm. and that was part of my PTSD mm -hmm. because I had a, what they've called a strong moral compass. Mm -hmm. And if I, I don't like people messing with the little guy that can't do anything for himself. Mm -hmm. And that's when I did research. I found out what they could do to me in the army and what my rights were. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a lot in the MP Corps is a human rights violations and their mm -hmm. philosophy is, well, they don't know any better. We could do whatever the heck we want. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the wrong answer. That's not leadership. Mm -hmm. And I've spoke to another, another General Zanini, he's retired now. He was the 8th Army Commander in Korea. Mm -hmm. I was a, star, a buck sergeant and I met his wife doing community-based assessments mm -hmm. and got on his calendar. He, he put me on it and we just sat there and I asked him about his leadership style. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that resonated with me the most was, hey, all this stuff's OJT. Mm -hmm. He says, one, don't listen to the people above you. He says, they're not your responsibility. Your responsibility are those in your charge. Mm -hmm. If they tell you you're screwing up, pay attention. Mm. Because they're the ones that are put in my charge. And I try to, I try to be a better now because I didn't have that emotion. Mm -hmm. Emotional intelligence didn't come out until 95 by Daniel Goldman. Mm -hmm. And looking through his research, it makes sense because it's just not your IQ. That's why you'll see a lot of people that are geniuses, but have no social skills or common mm -hmm. sense. Well, I look at that balance. There's a purpose for it all. Mm -hmm. And that's where I needed to love myself more than I loved other people. Hmm. Because once I loved myself more, I was a, I'm able to share love and understanding with others. 
And other than that, it was just doing the missions and being, I, I, I admit I didn't have a filter. Mm-hmm. I didn't know my audiences, <laughs> but to the most part, I, I wanted to know other people's stories. Yeah. And that's what I did with my Iraqi students, my Iraqi police guys. Mm -hmm. They went in. I I found out once you stand up for a group, the loyalty is second to none. Mm. And because no one stands up for them. Mm -hmm. And so I was that voice. And it was all positive. Yeah. Because, you know, everybody has their own style of leadership. Mm -hmm. But if you you're more palatable, if you you know you can go into a situation calm, collective and not freak out Mm -hmm. because you know what your triggers are. And that's another thing. I had triggers that people pushed and not usually not in my best (laughs) my <laughs> not for my benefit it yeah. was usually for theirs mm. but not being able to recognize that and just get emotional right? the anxiety manifests itself in anger and then it just mm. snowballed from there mm. because i wasn't one of those that would just talk and run nah yeah. you challenged me i never ran mm. but i see the error in that philosophy because not everything is a battle. And I used to bring the whole arsenal, tanks, helicopters, guns, to every tiny little situation. And I like, well, I have it in case I need it. Mm -hmm. Well, just like what law enforcement's been doing in Nashville, Mm -hmm. they, they had no control over themselves whatsoever and they lost their job. And now Mm -hmm. it's, shows you how quick you go from being a good guy to a criminal. Mm -hmm. And if you understand that and realize that everything that you're doing is being video. So do you want to be professional or do you want to be that, that rookie Mm -hmm. that runs into everything? Well, no, you don't need to run constantly, Mm -hmm. but I spent most of my adult life in hyperspeed because I was going to school, trying to take care of my family, do military stuff, do everything I could. And I burnt myself out Mm. because once that ends, what now? I don't, I have a master's. I don't need a doctorate, Mm -hmm. but it's that pushing forward. And I did it for myself rather than because ultimately you're, who do you live, wake up with every day? Yeah. And so, Philip, um, your current work, I want to I wanna jump around here a bit. So Ale okay. Solution and how you're helping veterans and in, in, through your coaching practice. Like, tell us a little bit more about that and really in, in how you're working with veterans to help them find, you know, their, their motivation and their purpose. Well, you know, it, it all boils down to what I saw out of, the constitution, the pursuit of happiness. Mm. And it's up to you to find that what that is. This is mine. My pursuit Mm. of happiness is helping others when, because I felt alone at times in which I was never alone Mm. is, it's just, I, I, you know, I felt guilty because I wasn't doing anything. Mm -hmm. And here I've been performing my whole life. And now it's like, And when people interact with you, they don't know you. Mm -hmm. So thank God I've learned to act with all walks of life. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I believe in you treat people the way with respect and you expect them to treat you. Mm -hmm. And what I've been doing with the veterans, I have a friend of mine that he's six foot six. Yeah. Big guy. That's a big guy. And I tried to explain to him, I said, you're intimidating. He's like, but I'm, I'm the nicest person you ever meet. I said, but people don't know that. Mm -hmm. And he started very sarcastic and everything. And what I tried to get him to understand is take a stop, take a stop. 
realize what you what you've done in the past just ticks people off because you don't know your audience and he's not he wasn't humble mm -hmm. but over the, the last four months i've been working with him and he's a whole nother person wow because he recognized when he was interacting and other people told him the same thing i was mm -hmm. and he went up for a position with wounded warrior project and for them it's a whole nother process for them mm -hmm. for you to get hired they don't hire just anybody yeah and you have to understand where you, you're humble kind gracious and you gotta let your ego and your pride go because mm -hmm. that's what offends most people is your ego mm. and i don't know everything so now i look at it as the more people i get involved the more i get people to understand that they have control over themselves mm -hmm. and because guys we're not taught those manners mm -hmm. especially when you're in the military you're taught to go and kill mm -hmm. and survive and complete the mission and you, your personal stuff is your personal stuff well once you get out and you don't have that rigid structure you need i needed somebody to teach me what mindfulness was i and i had the misconception misconception of it's meditation and get finding your inner peace well no it's so much more than that mm. that's not even the tip of the iceberg mm. and <clears throat> for me it's a constant practice and i catch myself every once in a while i'll get annoyed and get <laughs> a little agitated but then i go why am i annoyed mm. and i rationalize through it but for me, the biggest reward is seeing friend, my clients and friends prosper from it mm -hmm. and completely change their mindset and to where they better communicate with their families. And you're open and on. And that's the thing about it is you got to be honest with yourself. Yeah. Because when you lie, you're just wasting your own time. Mm. But if you're honest with yourself and say, and go it's me hi it's me i'm the problem here yeah it's my perception in the way i'm interacting with Steve yeah is it's a necessity now it's great so philip i want to i want to spend a little bit of time here now just for everybody watching this just to let you know we will be bringing Philip back on the show after the book is live, but I want to spend just a little bit of time. So this is a part one of a two part interview, but I want to spend just a little bit of time. If you will, this is just a teaser. We can't give the audience everything on this one. Not yet, Philip about the, uh, what you plan to contribute and maybe some of the ideas for the upcoming mission matters book that you'll be at been author in. Like, tell us a little bit more about what kind what you plan to propose. Well, what I'm planning to propose is to show a guideline of how how i was mm -hmm. the situation was i was very successful but i my mouth always got me in trouble mm. because i didn't know when to shut up <laughs> and but for now it's about picking and choosing your fights yeah and that and it goes both in your professional and your personal life mm -hmm. because it's you and no one can force you out of bed or make you do anything. It's you got to do it, want to do it for yourself. Hmm. And that's my journey of coming out of going into the military. I had an associate's degree. I earned my bachelor's and my master's because I saw it was for me in my personal development. And it all comes down to self-awareness yeah and if you're not aware of how you respond because i i've blown people away because i didn't get upset about hardly anything anymore mm. because all it does is exasperate the situation mm -hmm. and so i make better decisions 
I'm more loving to my family because of my self-awareness mm. and knowing that it, words are words, actions speak louder. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I've done everything I ever wanted mm -hmm. and this whole new, new prospect or new <clears throat> dealings. It's my gift to veterans that are struggling mm -hmm. and knowing that, Hey, I lead by example. I don't just, I don't tell you to do something I'm not willing to do myself. Yeah. And building that trust and those relationships, mm -hmm. because my passion definitely lies in solving problems and building relationships Yeah. because those relationships and not necessarily help me. I can help others with it. Mm -hmm. And part of that in coming to peace and finding my own peace within myself mm -hmm. after feeling alone, abandoned or retired is a hard thing to do when you're young. Yeah. But me getting out, me exercising, meeting people and mm -hmm. I've met professional football players that go through the same stuff mm -hmm. or professional athletes. They're all like, they don't know what to do now because they've done, they, yeah. their whole life was that sport. Right. And then after. Yeah. And then, yeah, you have all this money and everything, but what are you going to do with it? Mm -hmm. And some of them go broke. Other ones prosper. And makes you wonder, okay, frame of mind, can you get into, to be humble enough to go, I understand. That's well, my main goal. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to cut you off there. Cause we're definitely not going to give all the audience, the, all of what's going to be in the book. So we're going to, that's just a little teaser for everybody watching. But then again, I, I'm just remember, I'm going to be bringing Philip back on for a second part of this two part interview series. But for today, Phil, I just want to say really, it has been great having you on the show, just learning more about you, your background, why you do what you do really going from, you know, being blessed, also figuring out how to be a blessing in the lives of your clients, your friends, all those that you touch and really just taking your coaching practice to a whole nother level by doing things like creating content like we're doing today. I'm really excited to continue to watch AL Solutions grow and for you to prosper. But that being said, Philip, if somebody is watching this and they want to learn more or to connect with you and your team and to follow your journey, what's the best way for them to do this? This way, I'm on LinkedIn. That's my main platform that I use because it has everything that I need in it. Uh, I'm still in the process of doing the website. I still had, I need some more content to put into it, mm -hmm. but hopefully by the launch, it will be done because people, that's what they use to look you yep. up and you got to have an online presence. Oh yeah. Awesome. So we'll put your LinkedIn link and all that good stuff in the show notes so that our audience can click, just click on the link and head right on over and connect with you. And uh, speaking of the audience, if this is your first time with Mission Matters or engaging with an episode, we're all about bringing on business owners, entrepreneurs, executives, and experts and having them share their mission, the reason behind their mission, really why they do what they do and what gets them up in the morning, gets them fired up to go out there in the marketplace and make a difference and in the people's lives, right? If that's type of content that sounds interesting or fun or engaging to you, Hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. And Philip, this is just the beginning of us uh, working together. Can't wait to have you back on the show to do part two of this interview. But for today, thanks again for coming on the show. We had a lot of fun. All right. Thank you. I, I greatly appreciate you taking the time and allowing me to get my message out.